Hi, we want to give you a welcome today uh, with our guest today, Ms. Uh, Jackie. Uh, okay, Ms. Jackie, the time is yours. Yay. <laughs> I'm so glad you're here. So glad you're here with me today. Um, I want to tell you a story that happened to me a couple of months ago. I was walking around praying, thinking, you know, I wanted to talk to God. And I had a specific project a specific project I wanted the Father God to do. And I wanted him to do it now. So I didn't realize I was being quite so fussy and quite so telling God what to do. And I heard that just this sweet little message went through my heart. Don't worry about that project. I got your back and I got your future. So, you know, I'm, I'm crying. I'm ecstatic. I'm, I'm thrilled. He's got my back, and he's got my future, and I'm all happy about it. And then, in a couple of days, I'm walking around, and I'm walking around, and I'm thinking, would God really talk to me like that? Would he really say, I got your back, and I got your future? And so then I spent a couple of days walking around thinking, gosh, maybe I miss God, and just because I wanted you to do that project so bad, he said that to me. I thought he said that. So I'm walking around and walking around for a couple of days in just mud, just <laughs> squishing around in mud. Now at this age, I shouldn't do it. At this age, I should know better than that. And so it only took me two days instead of two weeks. But then it dawned on me that anything, anything that comes to you that's positive, that you're good at your job, that you're a good mom, that you are awesome with your Bible, Whatever it comes to you that's positive, that's from God. Because Satan only knows how to speak negative. So if anything comes to you negative, like you're not enough, you're not pretty enough, short enough, tall enough, bright enough, anything that's negative in any way is from Satan. So the thought came to me was, would God really talk to me that way? Duh, that's negative. Why did I let that bother me? But I did for a couple of days. So then, as soon as I said, I'm sorry, God. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I don't know why I went around two days before I thought of that. Then more insight came to me. First, God said, or I, I, no, I didn't, God didn't say anything to me after that. I, I just began to mull it in my mind. And it dawned on me that there are thousands of languages in the, United, in the world and dialects and all kinds of different things. And yet people all over the world, all over our earth, manage to hear from God. Duh, he speaks in the language that we speak. So he speaks in the modern day language, just like we speak to one another. So when he said, I got your back, I got your future, it was, Yes, it was God speaking to me, and yes, I should have heard it. And I did hear it. Then I let myself get in fear and doubt, which in the long run messes up my future, which is exactly what Satan wanted, to mess up my future. So after that happened, I was really happy about, okay, I've, I've worked through that some little problem, and I'm pretty sure of myself, you know, I'm kind of happy. And then I thought, my trusty Google. <laughs> I go to the to the net and type in scriptures. Got your back. Seventeen scriptures popped out of me. Seventeen that says things like "I go behind you and before me at all times." I should have remembered that from your vacation Bible school. <laughs> Seventeen different scriptures where God says. No matter what happens, no matter what we're going through, no matter if I'm going through menopause, he's still got my back, he's still got my future. We're gonna make it through it. 17 scriptures. It's I, I and, and please, if you're interested in that, knowing where God is about your past and your future, I'd like you to look them up. I did I did bring a couple that I wanted to read to you. <laughs> so, you know, I really always like to balance everything I read um, because I love the New Testament and I'm very I have to be careful because I tend to stay in the New Testament and so I make myself remember that three-fourths of the Bible is the Old Testament. And 
So there must be some things in there God wanted us to know. So I now make myself always balance every New Testament um, scripture I find. I make sure I balance it out with scriptures from the Old Testament. And, and to me, that gives me a deep understanding of God's grace and his mercy for us. So if we start in Deuteronomy 31, 8, he says, Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them, our enemy. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. And in that same uh, same chapter, verse, uh, sorry, chapter 3, verse 22, he just flat says, don't be afraid of them. The Lord your God himself will fight for you. And then in Isaiah 41, 10, this passage reminds us, in comforting words, the whole passage is very sweetly spoken, and I don't always think of Isaiah being sweetly spoken. But he's sweetly talking to all of us about how the fact that Jesus, uh, or excuse me, that the Father God, because in, that, in the Old Testament we're talking to the Father God, that the Father God would always be with us. He encouraged us not to be fearful for any reason. And he says to us, he will uphold us with his righteous right hand, allowing us always to stand firm. The Israelites were filled with fear. After all, they'd been enslaved for 400 years. What did they know of freedom? I had to look that up. I couldn't, I couldn't grasp why the Israelites were having so much trouble crossing the dry, on dry land, or why they did so, why they backed up so much when they had such a great leader. I, I just couldn't figure it out. And it had to be God. You know, right. I hear this little thing like, not here, but it just dawned on me. Why don't you look that up? How long were they enslaved? They were enslaved 400 years. Do you know what that does to your DNA? You know, generation after generation living in a box, living with not enough food and not enough, um, not enough recognition of what they were doing in any way. They were just slaves. It, no wonder it was so easy for them to say, take us back to Egypt, because that's all we ever known. Four generations. Uh, F-O-R, four generations. That many generations, 400 years of slavery. Wow. So suddenly I could give them a whole lot of slack. Because, I mean, I heard God. I heard God, and I doubted after two days. Had I been in slavery, had my generations been in slavery for 400 years, would I be strong enough to want to keep fighting the Israelites? I mean, the, the Egyptians. I don't know. I'm thinking probably not. So it certainly gave me a an understanding. And then, you know, I hear the Lord saying, He will fight for you. You just need to be still. Well, that sounds good. It's scary when you're crossing that dry land and you hear the horses behind you. It's pretty scary to stand still. Or when they ran out of food, or, you know, all these different things that happened to them. Suddenly, I have a whole understanding, a new understanding, of why that was such a big deal for them. Now the Passion Translation, you know how I knew about the Passion Translation, crazy for you. In John 14, 16 through 18, it says, I will ask the Father, and He will give you another Savior, the Holy Spirit of Truth. I just, I just prayed. He even called our Holy Spirit our Savior. Because they're so one. The Trinity is so one. I was, I was so impressed with that. Who will be your friend just like me? So Jesus was talking and saying, I'm not going to leave you alone. I'm going to leave you someone with, with, who's going to be a friend as deeply as I am a friend. And he will never leave you. The world won't receive him because they can't see him or know him. But you will receive him. And then he goes on in the, in the passion to say, He will live inside of you. I promise that I will never leave you helpless or abandoned or orphans. And then he says, I will come back to you. Now, all my life, that sentence, I will come back to you, meant to me that he was coming back 
in the end times. You know, he's going to come back on that white horse and save us all. And and I just, I just couldn't grasp that he meant I'm going to come back to you now. And the more I read the New Testament, the more I look at it, he clearly says, I'm coming back to you now. I'm moving in with the Holy Spirit. I'm going to be part of your life for now and forever. How precious is that? He's going to be part of us. The Holy Spirit is part of us from now and forever. So, the, so now we've got the Old Testament and the New Testament in agreement with God. And so we, that God always has our back and he has our future. And we just simply have to learn to lean into his strength. And for me, uh, it's just the thing I do when I'm praying and I'm getting really, I'm getting really um, intimate with the Father God. I, I just do it. I just lean into the Spirit. It's an outward manifestation. It doesn't mean anything to God. It means it to me. I'm just leaning forward so that I know the Father God sees my efforts to grow with Him, which is really kind of funny because God can hear our thoughts. So, <laughs> I don't know why I bothered to do that, but it is where my flesh is. Now, the most difficult thing for men and women in the Bible times, to the, as it is today, is consistency. Yeah. That made me feel a little better that even, even those who walk with Jesus had trouble with consistency. It's one of the things that the Father God works with me often. I am consistent for months, and then I sit down. <laughs> and the next thing I know, I haven't been in my scriptures enough, or I've been way too busy with my YouTube channels and not busy enough with the Father God. And every now and then I get that little knock, he's <laughs> like, oh girl, you're not being consistent. So I do need you to understand that, that when, although the Father God has our back and has our future, he expects us to walk consistently day after day with him. So now, I'd like to pray for us. Father God, I thank you for this audience. I thank you for their kindness and mercy. I thank you that they're here. I thank you that they want to grow. And Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you that you touch the audience financially, emotionally, physically, spiritually, and even with creativity. You cause their creativity to blossom and bloom, and they're successful at everything they put their hands to. And Father, I thank you that you have our back and you have our future. I thank you, Father, that you are our God and King. Amen.